Here are some additional examples of Gauss's law for symmetric charge distributions. As a reminder, Gauss's law states that the total electric flux around an enclosed charge only depends on the magnitude of the enclosed charge. To calculate the electric field for a symmetric charge, it is best to use an enclosing surface similar in shape to the charge distribution itself. In our first example, we will use Gauss's law to calculate the electric field at some distance r away from an infinitely long uniform line charge. The line charge density will be designated by lambda and is constant. We will use an enclosing surface that is cylindrical in shape as to ensure that the electric field will be parallel to the normal vector to the surface. We will use the line charge density to get an expression for charge enclosed. We apply Gauss's law and substitute in for the charge enclosed. We divide by the surface area where the electric field crosses the enclosure. Notice we do not need to include the top and bottom of the cylinder this way because no electric field lines cross it. Finally, simplify the expression. Notice this is identical to the result we calculated using vector integration with Coulomb's law. The electric field from a uniform line charge drops off as distance r. In our second example, we will calculate the electric field at some distance y away from a uniform infinite plane charge. The surface charge density sigma is equal to charge per area, 
and is constant. Once again, we will use a Gaussian surface parallel to the geometry of the object. Note that the surface intersects the electric field both above and below the plane of the charge. We will rearrange the charge density to help us with an expression for charge. We apply Gauss's law and insert our expression for enclosed charge. We divide by the area intercepted by the electric field. Notice that because the electric field intercepts the area both above and below the charge, we need to double up the area. When we simplify, we get the result that the electric field at any point from an infinite uniform plane charge is constant. This is consistent with the requirement that electric field lines do not cross. For such a uniform charge distribution, this means they need to stay parallel. The distance from the plane does not matter. It is important to note that the same method can be used to derive the electric field around negative charges as well. Because the electric field points towards such charges, however, and hence is anti-parallel to the normal, to the surface, the electric field itself will pick up the negative sign. An important application of the above derivation is the electric field between parallel, oppositely charged planes. When the charge densities are uniform and equal to each other, the electric field between the planes will be uniform, constant, and double the value from either of the planes. <laughs>